So for this question, we're looking at the uh, effects that are true in regards to parathyroid hormone. Uh, just to, as a summary, right, the parathyroid hormone comes from the parathyroid gland. Uh, it's the major regulator of blood calcium levels, and uh, as we'll see, we're going to go over the key characteristics of this hormone. Uh, so let's take a look here, and the first one, we'll see which ones are correct, and we'll cross off which ones are incorrect. So it is released when blood calcium levels are too high. That is incorrect. Calcitonin from the thyroid gland uh, is released when blood calcium levels are too high. Number two is released when blood calcium levels are too low. That is the correct response for parathyroid hormone. And having low blood calcium levels uh, are a lot more common and that's why parathyroid hormone is the major regulator of our blood calcium levels. So the next two have to do with bone calcium levels. So if our blood calcium levels are low, uh, the major storage of calcium in the body is in our bones. So the easiest way to increase our blood calcium levels is to steal it kind of from uh, our bones. So when parathyroid hormone is released, it is will would it decrease bone calcium levels or would it increase bone calcium levels? And the correct answer, it will decrease our bone calcium levels because it's putting that calcium from the bone into the blood. So number four would be the incorrect response. Uh, to continue on, we have a difference between osteoclasts and osteoblasts. If you remember from uh, your anatomy course, osteoclasts erode bone or to break down bone, and when doing so, taking calcium and putting it from the bone into the blood, and osteoblasts build bone, and they actually store calcium in bone, so they take calcium from the blood and put it into the bone. So in this case, again, uh, parathyroid hormone would activate osteoclasts because clasts take the calcium from the bone and put it into the blood, is which, which is what we want for this question. Uh, for number seven, uh, it would initiate the production of vitamin D. That is correct because if you remember vitamin D, the body has the ability to produce it and vitamin D uh, assists and helps the absorption of calcium in the small intestine. So if you absorb more calcium, it would increase our blood calcium levels, which makes seven and eight correct. Eight being it would increase the absorption of calcium in the small intestines because we want to increase our blood calcium levels. And we have two more, and it has to do with what the kidney or what the nephron would do when parathyroid hormone is present. Would it decrease the reabsorption of calcium or would it increase the reabsorption of calcium? And the correct response here is it would increase the reabsorption of calcium because that is bringing uh, calcium from the tubules back into the blood and that's which is what we want. We, if we want to increase blood calcium levels, we want to eliminate it or decrease the amount that we urinate and uh, increase the amount that we reabsorb. Uh, just as a side note, if someone were to have a parathyroid tumor and have hyperparathyroidism, so they'd have too much parathyroid hormone, uh, it would cause uh, excessive levels of calcium in the blood and hypercalcemia. If you had hypercalcemia, muscle cramps and spasms and fatigue and kidney failure and kidney stones are common, but it could also lead to arrhythmias and uh, uh, asystole uh, in uh, the patient as well. So it can be a very serious uh, condition. So it's something to uh, note, not seen often, uh, but there has been uh, cases that paramedics have dealt with with people with parathyroid and arrhythmias and asystole and heart problems. So if we look at what the correct answer would be, we want two, three, uh, 5, 7, 8, and 10, so if we go down to the bottom, that would be uh, E.